Good evening, everyone. This is Andrew from Andrew's Weather Center, and the current time is 8.49 p.m. on Friday, January the 6th, 2017. I hope you're hunkered down and have all of your driving done for the evening, as the winter storm is really starting to beef up to our southwest in uh, eastern Alabama, northwestern Georgia, and um, upstate South Carolina. And as the snow approaches, I hope that you are ready for a significant winter storm, because as I saw one uh, meteorologist colleague on Twitter earlier say, we can see the whites in its eyes and it is upon us. So I'm going to keep this video a little more brief than the one last night. And um, we're going to look at just a couple of things. The current radar is the first thing we'll take a look at here. And this is just the radar from Intellicast. Um, I couldn't find a, a good radar that was showing precipitation depiction that well. So I'll just stick with this one for now. It does a pretty good job of showing that the snow is building into the western North Carolina. Um, going over the foothills right now, approaching the triad. I know a lot of people had reported flakes flying around the triad earlier. Uh, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point area, even Lexington, I think, got a good coating of snow um, from that first round of snow. So that was earlier, and now this is the main event that's coming in. Don't don't fear, the main event is still on the way, and all of this snow will continue tracking to the northeast like it is in this uh, animated radar, and it'll keep going as the night progresses. And significant snow can be expected in the triad. You, you guys in the triad are, are pretty clear. Um, from any kind of rain or sleet mix that is going to be the issue in Charlotte and on the Triangle area, is pretty confident that you're going to see some significant snow from this. So uh, enjoy, and lucky you, because you don't have to deal with any of the sleet mess that may be happening uh, about 45 to 50 miles to your southeast. So this is a look at the current radar, and then if we look at this and compare it to the forecasted precipitation from excuse me, the forecasted accumulated snowfall from the National Weather Service in Raleigh. Uh, this is looking pretty accurate. Um, and these totals here, this is the most likely snowfall like I showed in yesterday's video, the statistical mean of what you can expect. And you can see this very sharp gradient here from just, you know, over the course of maybe 50 or 60 miles, you go from less than an inch, you know, an inch max to almost a foot of snow possible. So um, that very tight gradient is what makes these winter storms so challenging to forecast in this part of the state because the slightest tick in the, in the track of the storm or the the you know levels of the atmosphere, the heating and the, the smallest change in the atmosphere can lead to monumental changes in the forecast and what you see. And in some places uh, north of Raleigh and north of the Triangle, east of the Triad may rack up like you see here in this 8 to 12 inch range. I'm sure someone will be in a sweet spot where they get in excess of that, and I'm sure that uh, there will be a sweet spot in here that will get more, and then places that will get less. So if we look at that, you can see the, the very tight gradient, and then this is just the most uncertainty. This is where the question mark falls. Um, pretty much south of, of, or excuse me, east of I-95, and then south of this line here, it's pretty much set in stone that you're not going to get the um, large accumulating snowfall totals that will be up here, but it still just remains as to, to where that transition line sets up. And I actually sit in a very precarious location myself in Clayton, North Carolina, which is about right here. So I will be up all night watching what happens because I am right in the middle of all that, and I'm very curious to see how the storm develops and where that transition line happens. So if we take a look now, at something called the HRRR, or High Resolution Rapid Refresh Model. This model goes uh, 18 hours out, and it is now 100% complete running. Um, it was about 89% when I started the video, so that's good. Uh, this is the latest run of this, and this is precipitation type. So what you're seeing here, the dark blue shades is snow, the green is rain, and then this pinkish hue, or red hue, and then this purple down here in um, Georgia is actually uh, ice pellets. and um, or excuse me, no, that, that's freezing rain, yes. Sometimes the color tables get kind of confusing, but this purple is actually um, freezing rain, as you can see down here, and then ice pellets is this red to pink hue. Snow is blue and rain is green. So if we drag this, actually I'm going to loop this so we can watch it, and I'm going to slow it down a bit so we can watch that progress. Uh, this time frame is starting at the 8 o'clock hour and goes through 18 hours the next day. I'll slow it down a little bit more. And... As you can see, there's a very well-defined transition zone between the snow and the rain, and that is what's going to make or break some of these snowfall totals for that area. That's that same questionable area that was in the snowfall forecast that 
it's just a toss up. It's, it depends on uh, how far the warm air infiltrates in. And I'll, we'll talk about that in a second, what's causing that. But how far that comes inland this evening and overnight into the wee hours of the morning, that's going to determine if you get sleet, if you get a cold rain, if you get five inches of snow. So this is what's projected to happen. Uh, this purple has been showing up in more runs, which is a little bit concerning. Um, I've seen it come up. I haven't really talked about a freezing rain event, but uh, there has to be some kind of transition from snow to sleet to freezing rain to rain. Um, so I'll be watching that more carefully. There hasn't really been much talk about an icing event, but there's going to be a mixed bag in here. It's just going to be a mess. Uh, travel is not advised. Of course, you've heard that temperatures are going to remain below freezing for up to 72 hours after this event. So no matter what falls outside, uh, pretty much I've seen it thrown around on Facebook. North Carolina will be closed essentially uh, for at least the day tomorrow while some of the um, the DOT workers and, and things get the roads cleared off. But it's just going to be a mixed bag of precipitation, just a huge mess. So I also want to look at uh, temperatures and talk about what's happening that could cause that transition line and what's causing that sleet. So I'm going to drag this one so we can play with it a little bit more. And this white fuzzy line, it's actually a contour, but the resolution is so high it looks kind of bunched up here. Uh, this is the freezing line, and this is currently, this is at 1Z, so it's actually uh, predicting at 9 p.m., which is five minutes uh, when this video is being uploaded. It, it's creeping down. It kind of draws down to the southeast a little bit. It's creeping down, and you're saying, well, that should all be snow because this is all below freezing. Well, even though the surface is below freezing, this low right here, which you can actually see this closed, uh, these isobars are wrapping around here, the low pressure is actually going to be out here, and the circulation around low pressures are counterclockwise. So it's pulling down cold air from the north, which is causing this cold air to infiltrate here, but if you have this counterclockwise circulation, you're also throwing in much warmer air out here than the 70s and in the, the 50s and 60s, probably you know 40s and 50s at the upper, the lower levels above your head in the, the upper level of the troposphere, the lower level of the atmosphere. And um, that was difficult, but this is pulling in warmer air and that's that's gonna go just over top of these surface. Um, if you look at this parameter, this is two meter temperature. So this is what you feel when you go outside. So that's what can cause the freezing rain, which is showing up in that purple hue. But this is pulling in warmer air and that, if that layer is shallow enough and it's weak enough, meaning it's, you know, under one degree Celsius or, you know, it's 33 degrees above the surface, that, that precipitation, if it's heavy enough, can actually fly right through that and fall as snow. But if that warm nose infiltrates and gets in and builds up enough, the snow will fall, it melts, and then it refreezes as sleet, which sleet is very dense and does not accumulate like snow does. So you could be very disappointed when you wake up and your yard looks kind of gray-white with about an inch of compacted sleet on the ground. So um, that's the story there. That's something to watch. That's the whole deal with this storm. If you're in the triad, you'll be getting snow. Um, Davidson County, Davie County, Randolph County, snow. Um, Burlington, snow. Durham, you're starting to get in that question mark area. You should be pretty safe. Um, Raleigh, you're looking, you're right on that line with the transition. Myself in Clayton, North Carolina, I'm right near the um, KRAX Doppler radar. So if any of you live near that area, that's where I'll be watching from to see what's going on. But um, it's just a, a mixed bag can be expected in there, and it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. So one more parameter I'm going to look at is uh, total accumulated precipitation. So this these are not snowfall totals. This is the liquid equivalent, something we call QPF, a qualitative precipitation forecast. And basically you can think of this as if you were to take all of the snow in your yard that falls and then melt it down at a you know a calculated ratio, a certain amount, and where you were to melt it down and then put it back in a measuring, or not a measuring cup, but a measuring device, a rain gauge, it would actually equate to this number. So if you're seeing 1.04 here, that's not 1.04 inches of snow, that's 1.4 inches of liquid accumulation. So snow usually falls at something we call a 10 to 1 ratio. So if you have an inch of precipitation and all the conditions are favorable, you're going to have a 10 to 1 ratio or 10 inches of snow to 1 inch of precipit you know, total quality precipitation. And unfortunately, this area is probably not going to be all snow, but uh, basically you can multiply this number by 10 and you have a, a feasible, a very, very loose guess at um, snowfall, but there's so many 
other factors that contribute into that. But um, this sweet spot here could actually be interesting if we have sleet because sleet could really come down and could get some pretty massive sleet accumulations, which um, sleet's tiny little ice pellets, so it takes a long time to accumulate. But uh, things get getting interesting here. But this is a lot of precipitation that will be falling, so uh, this is going to be a pretty significant winter storm. If you haven't heard that by now, uh, this is a pretty big one, and there's a lot of moisture with this is a, is a good way to put it. There's a lot to go around here. It's not like... Uh, anything is going to dry up. There won't be uh, bad dry slotting. This is going to be a, a whole storm that runs up the entire entire uh, Carolina coast here, and it's going to be pretty significant. So that's pretty much the wrap on that. I do want to show one more thing before I conclude this video, and that is um, something called MPING, which is Meteorological Precipitation Identification Near the Ground, M-P-I-N-G. And uh, it's an app you can download on your phone. It's free. And it is um, a partnership by, I believe, the University of Oklahoma and the Storm Prediction Center or Weather Prediction Center. But what it's doing is you basically submit what you're seeing outside on an app, and it's reported to this map here. And it's good for identifying, okay, I see the rain snow line on the radar, but what's actually falling on the ground? It's, it's the equivalent of storm chasers and tornadoes or something that are confirming what's being shown on radar. So it's a great app. I'll link this in the video and also um, share it on Facebook and things like that so that you can... Uh, participate in that because the more the better. You can see here, this is a loop over the, the timestamps cut off here, but a loop over the past several hours that have shown uh, rain down here and then snowflakes and then uh, this brown box indicates a test if someone's just testing their location. So uh, that's what that looks like. And the more of these, the better you can identify what's falling on the ground. So it's a, um, a ground truth confirmation thing. And I will share that and hopefully you can participate in that. And I can see that I'm now at about 12 minutes, so um, I need to wrap this up. I thought I was going to go shorter, but lots to talk about with this winter storm, as always, because there are so many different facets and factors to um, pull into this. But I hope that you're staying safe. I will be staying up all night to see what's going on in my backyard, and I'll do my best to keep you posted. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment on Facebook, send me a message, uh, tweet at me. Uh, any way you can get in contact to me, I'll be up all night. I'll be uh, trying to record this so I can document it and um, eventually have some kind of video up on my YouTube channel documenting the storm, but uh, we'll see what happens with this one. It's been a challenge to forecast, and uh, it's zero hour, so let's see what this storm does and see how it goes into the history books, and I um, hope you're staying safe, and I will see you on Facebook through various posts, or I might even do another update video later in the evening um, into the wee hours of the morning. I'm not sure yet, but um, if not, I'll see you on the next video, and I hope you're staying safe. Stay warm and enjoy the snow.